Hello guys, welcome to part 3 of our little spline modeling tutorial series. Uh, this time we're going to look at quite a fun little modifier called Sweep, which can be used to do some quite nice stuff, especially if you're doing environmental details. So let's uh, move on over to 3D Studio Max, we get a little look at what we're going to be creating. Uh, so the Sweep modifier is great. Uh, let me just jump right in to show you what we're going to be creating. So I'm going to start with... Uh, just a plain circle here. Uh, just go to our create, go to your splines, and I've just created a circle. That's all I've done. Just create a circle. It's not rendered or anything like that. But what I've also done is created another uh, little spline shape using the line tool. And what we're going to create here is, you know, the trim you would get around the top of. Uh, the top of the walls in a fancy room, the kind of little uh, molding around the top. So I've created this little shape here, you can see what it is, just this sort of complex little shape, just using splines and curves and beziers and things. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the circle, whoops, we're just going to select the circle, we're going to go to our modifier panel, and we're going to add a sweep modifier. And what we want to do is, on this modifier where it says section type, we want to go to use custom section. I want to click the pick button. And then we're going to pick this second shape that we have. And you'll see automatically what happens. Is that it basically applies that shape all the way around what we're looking at. And you can see here already, this one looks quite good. This almost looks kind of like... Uh, maybe a rim around a camera lens or you could imagine this as being a, a fancy fountain in the middle of one of your levels if you just play with the play with the initial shape and what we can do is we can go into our sweep parameters here open that up and we can mirror it so it is on the inside rather than the outside uh, we can flip it upside down if it's the wrong way around and we can do a few other things with the alignment that I'll show you later on. So it's really, really useful. I'm going to show you a few more practical examples for this now. Uh, here's one. Say we have like a, a sci-fi level or something. And we've got these nice smooth curved walls. All that consists of is just our initial line drawn along the floor. And then a cross section of what that wall would look like. And we've got the uh, the sweep modifier applied to the one that we'll be making the walls. Now here's something pretty cool about this. Because this modifier is being taken from a shape, what we can actually do is go back to this initial shape. And let me see. Where is my edit selection? There we are. I can actually edit this in real time and it will affect uh, the walls we've created. So what this is useful for if you want to say iterate a few different designs you can duplicate them and very quickly just uh, change the shape of that spline and all the geometry will be changed along with it. We could even add more geometry in there. Let me see geometry insert oops now that has not had the effect I want at all oh that's why because it's not on the plane that I want but if I take this plane and sort of align it back up with the rest of them as best I can there we go not quite perfect just yet but you can see what's happening there uh, yeah, we can we just edit this in real time and make it do more complex stuff. And of course we can right click on here. Let me just get a better view. Right click on here, set this to smooth, and that will curve out those walls, do stuff like that. So yeah, for your sci-fi environments, things like that, this is really useful. Uh, you could also use this, say if you're creating like a, a rocket ship or something, you want to create some uh, detail around the outside of it. Uh, create one of these cross sections and uh, apply that on there. Uh, another really good example of this technique, uh, say you're making a, a door frame. 
So I've just started with a, let me see, go back to top level here. I've just started with a rectangular shape. Uh, I just had a rectangle and I deleted the bottom line off it just to give me the three sided shape here. Uh, added the sweep modifier and just made a tiny little uh, another molding shape to give us that uh, door frame. So there we go. That looks quite nice. If we zoom in, you can see the kind of detail we're getting there. Again, you're going to need to unwrap all this stuff, but it's easy enough to unwrap. We would uh, add an edit poly modifier on that, or actually we wouldn't even need to. Just go straight to the uh, unwrap UVW. And easiest way would just be to cut it here at these angles and flatten these out uh, into long strips and just make textures from that. Easy peasy. Uh, so the final thing I want to show you is kind of more of a, a real world application of this. Say, say we are actually making a level in a game uh, and this box here is just our... Uh, or basic empty room. Say we're going to make a big fancy ballroom or something, we could cut windows out and do that. We want to add that kind of molding around the top, those fancy kind of architectural details to make it look all snooty. Uh, one thing we can do is again create another little molding shape. And I'm just using the same one that we used down here. I've just duplicated it and moved it over. Uh, and I think I showed you this technique in the last video. But if we take this box and we go to our edge selection mode, if it's an editable poly and we can select the edges I'm just going to select these top three edges here just around the top and we have create shape from selection so in the last video we uh, we were making the, the rope we used, a similar, we used a similar technique now when we get this create shape one thing to be aware of, you've got two options here linear or smooth, if I leave this as smooth you can see that uh, it kind of tries to smooth out the corners so we have no sharp corners and that will ruin the shape so we don't want that uh, when we hit create shape from selection just go linear and what that will do is it will make sure that, that shape actually sticks from vertex to vertex and has straight lines between them ok so now if I go top level and I select I should be able to select my spline, yes I have there we go and we're just going to do the exact same thing in your modifier list and add a where are you? Where are you? What am I looking for? Sweep. And now, same thing. We're not using a built-in selection. We are using a custom section. We're going to pick that custom section, and that is going to be our shape that we made. And there we go. So we've got the sweep, but oh dear, problem being, it's not lined up correctly. So that's okay. We can fix that. Just go to your sweep parameters. Uh, we want to just play about with some of these options until we get it exactly as we want. So the first thing we can do is we can mirror and play about with this until you get the right one. And it looks like this one will do exactly what we want. The only problem is it's still kind of half inside, half outside our wall. Now the reason why it's doing that is because where it's picking the alignment point, where it's picking the pivot to actually place this secondary shape, on the the sweep shape so if we go to these little dots here we can choose where this pivot's actually going to align and if i just click these we can see what happens it just automatically moves this around now generally for a simple shape you should be able to find one of them that fits in quite well and there we go if i pick that top right shape that seems to be fitting quite well and look at that, we've got a nice little moulding around the top of this room now. Isn't that lovely? There we go. So a couple of wee things to just bear in mind. If you are doing this, uh, I don't think I actually did it myself. But when you're making these shapes, make sure that this top point aligns with the bottom point here. Just so you don't get a little gap looking in up underneath. Um, same thing, we have to unwrap this. But we can just... Uh, do a flatten unwrap and apply it to a trim sheet texture. If you're looking at my environmental modeling tutorials, I'll have explained trim sheets as well. Um, and we can add in more detail, more like a normal map detail on here. Um, but yeah, that's that's that. 
Um, again, like all the spline stuff, very, very specific uses, not the most common thing you might use. Uh, there are other ways to make this kind of detailing and modeling. You could do this just with your regular box modeling if you wanted to. But the, the spline method is there. If that's something you like, uh, feel free to use that. Just remember when you've got this, you would want to either add an edit poly modifier on top or just go straight to your unwrap, just with unwrap UEW. Another wee thing to be aware of is just your poly count here. You might want to lower this down uh, just so it's not too high poly for in-game. But what you could also do is make a really high poly version of it and a really low poly version of it. And when you go into Substance Painter, as we always do, uh, apply that high poly version to the low poly just to get those extra details back in. But uh, I'm going to leave that there. Sweep modifier is quite fun to play around with, uh, especially useful for things, as I say, like the door frames and that, useful to quickly generate those. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them down below in the comment section. If you have any suggestions for clever ways you could use this as well, drop them down below. Um, and if you like the video, hit the like button, etc. Thank you very much. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you for the next set of tutorials.